Good morning, fellow YouTubers and those that stopped by. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Um, so we're getting another series going here. Um, if you haven't already watched my previous video, let's play a little bit into this one. Um, I picked up a bunch of tools and <laughs> history. Okay, so my grandfather, who um, I was very close to, um, spent a lot of time with him from age 10 on until his passing. Um, <laughs> very unique guy, great, had uh, one of his things, so he didn't believe in having one piece of equipment with interchangeable things. So for example, we had riding lawnmowers, uh, which were garden tractors, but then we had to have a garden tractor with like a rototiller on it, or a garden tractor with a plow on it, or a garden tractor with a blade on it. Multiple machines, rather than one machine that fits the bill. So. Loved it about my grandfather. Um, he was an avid John Deere collector. Um, had multiple old tractors and garden tractors and everything. And uh, so growing up in that, uh, that's where I found my fascination uh, for tractors. Um, RV Tractor Man. Um, growing up in school, fun fact for you, uh, my peers in my classes, uh, I inherited the name John Deere. And by doing that, it was kind of funny because come picture day, uh, the photographer actually put John Deere in the first cut of the uh, yearbook. So uh, I got called to the office about that. They're like, why did you, uh, I'm like, I don't know. So got that fixed before the yearbook was cut. But anyway, so a little bit of history there. So one of the bad traits that I have acquired is uh, the need for multiple tools of the same thing. For example, chainsaws. Um, I've lost count of chainsaws. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven chainsaws, maybe eight, I don't know, um, two, two will cut the bill. So what I need to do is, in the new tools that I acquired, is a new chainsaw. And it looks like it's in really good shape. Um, I think what I'd like to do in this video is go ahead and pull that out first, kind of go through it, um, clean it up. I know nothing about it. It's probably sat in the shed for three years, four years. Uh, so I want to go through it. So um, if I can get that saw going to my liking, I will probably keep that one. And then some of the other saws, I'll go ahead. I know they run and stuff. They just need to be cleaned up and maybe sharpened. Um, get them going. And then the idea is maybe start dropping some stuff on uh, uh, Facebook Marketplace and see if I can get rid of some items and inherit some money to work on other items. Um, so with that, I got that. I got pole saws. Um, that's kind of where I want to go with this video, is going through some of this stuff, cleaning up some room, and then um, I'm kind of in between projects right now. I really don't want to start a new project. Um, I'm waiting for um, the time to go and pick up our next project, which is going to be a blast. Um, so if you would, stay with me, and let's work through this together, and see what we come up with. All right, so this will be item number one that we go through. So this is the new chainsaw that I picked up. Uh, it is a Husqvarna E142 model, 18-inch saw. Um, and this is the condition I got it in. I literally threw it in the pickup truck, and I think I need to go ahead and go through it now. Looks pretty good. Um, I can tell the chain still has some bite to it. It's a little dull. Uh, not a big deal. We'll go through that. Um, yeah, a clean little saw. So let me go ahead and get set up here, and we will start, I think, by uh, going ahead and pulling the cover off, cleaning the air cleaner, and then maybe wiping it down a little bit um, before I put fluids in it. I want to start off by saying that um, everything I'm doing here is self-taught. Um, I, I guess this is the way that I like to say is there may be things that I do that may not be the right way, or... Uh, something that I do that makes you go, oh, what are you, what are you doing, right? Um, that's okay. Uh, got to start somewhere. You know, one of the things I've noticed is with my generation, um, I have several people, friends, who own chainsaws and equipment, power tools. They don't know how to maintain them. They won't maintain them. It's easier for them to buy a chainsaw, use it until the chain goes dead, and then borrow a saw, buy a new saw, something. Uh, take it to the shop for repairs and they're so dang easy to repair and keep um, keep up to date and everything it just uh, I guess people just aren't mechanically inclined anymore 
So I'm going to go through some steps in this, um, and hopefully there's something if you're maybe one of those people that are kind of intimidated by maintaining these things and you own one, um, maybe some things I show you will help you be able to maintain them. So first thing I'm going to do is pull the cover. Um, this one has three screws, and I've already unloosened two of them. There's that one. We'll go ahead and pop that cover off. There we go. Not bad. You can always look at the bottom side and see how much stuff's built up. Um, this one really looks like it hasn't been ran a whole lot. What we're looking for is the uh, air breather or air filter. We'll go ahead and pop that off. It doesn't look too terribly bad. Oil and stuff will get built up on them. Um, but this one is in pretty good shape. I'm betting this saw was probably purchased during a major storm. Uh, maybe some trees came down and needed something. Couldn't get anybody cleaned up, so I went to the local hardware store and bought one. Um, yeah, not bad. A little build up in there. We'll go ahead and clean that up a little bit and uh, get her clean, put back on there. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the compressor um, off camera, noisy thing, and we'll go ahead and see what we need to do next. So I just gave it a quick uh, blow down here. I'm not going to do nothing special to this. Um, if I were going to be really tuning the saw up, what I would do is go ahead and pull out some uh, diesel or parts cleaner and pull the tub, uh, put some in, use a parts brush, and just kind of clean up parts. I'm not going to do that thus far with this. First off, I'm out of diesel. Got to get more diesel or parts cleaner. Um, so for this one I'm just going to do a wipe down and just clean up some of the gullies where there's stuff in there and uh, I think we'll be okay. I mean this saw really isn't all that bad. If it was any worse I would go ahead and do that but um, I think we're in good shape there. So go ahead and just kind of knock some of the little stuff off of it there. And then uh, I like these shop towels for wiping stuff down. They hold together really well. So, yeah, just kind of go over the plastic and get any of the dirt and grime off of them. Alright, well, let me go ahead and do this, and um, we'll come back to you guys. Alright, so I went ahead and gave it a quick wipe down. I'm happy with it. Like I said, we're not going to go in really deep with this one. Uh, chances are I'll probably go ahead and use this and see how it does then go ahead and clean it up really good or putting it away for next time so um okay so let's get back to the air cleaner um i happen to have some soapy water already in the house so i just kind of cleaned it up and you don't need to do that um i just happen to have it so i went ahead and did it but uh typically you can blow these out the biggest thing is you want to be able to hold them up to light and be able to see through them um if you get daylight then you know that it's able to uh, still work as an air cleaner. So this is good. We'll go ahead and slide this back on. Okay. Get that bolted down. Okay. 
just snug. We don't need to over tighten. Just holding in place. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on. thing I'm going to do before I put fluids in it is I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, chain cover off and uh, loosen up the chain, pull up the chain, inspect the chain, and then I want to clean up any debris that's in there, kind of uh, inspect it first before we try to start this thing up. So uh, let me go ahead and put this cover on and I'll get the side cover pulled off. Now this is where people get intimidated. It's not that hard. Um, typically, find the right size wrench and just pop them. Cool. That one's on there way too tight. <laughs> way too tight. That'll actually crack the frame if it's that tight. Okay. So on this particular saw you can loosen them up and then there's probably you know, there's an adjustment screw. So with those loose, if you go ahead and loosen up the adjustment screw, the chain now has room and pull it a couple times. We'll go ahead and take this completely off. These saws are so easy to work on. I just can't believe that people throw them away or um, let them just sit in the shop. And I have a hypothesis on partly why chainsaws become hard to start and why people um, <laughs> just don't maintain them. So we'll get into that briefly here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and get those off. Okay, I'll just come right off. Yeah, a little bit of garbage in there. So we're going to get all this cleaned up. Uh, everything's looking good with the drive and clutch and everything. Alright guys, I went ahead and got everything all cleaned up. Uh, not super good, but just getting the big stuff knocked off. Um, so a couple things. So I inspected the chain. chain looks good. All the drives are there. There's no real wear on them. Um, the one thing I did notice though is on the cover, on the inside, it's tore up really bad. Now, two things will cause that. First thing is if the cover is on way too tight, like it was, um, when chains throw, they tend to have nowhere to go as to where if they're not loose but um, not overly tight, at least it gives a little bit more of a play. Um, so I'm going to watch that closely. The other thing that could happen is the clutch, if the clutch is loose. clutch is good. So not sure exactly why it gouged in like that. Could have been um, even the wrong chain. Maybe somebody put the wrong chain on this at one time. So um, it's just something I have to note. Because uh, what it'll do is it'll actually wear through this outside and you can kind of see where it got so hot right there that it did uh, Wear through so somebody was really trying to cut something and there was just a lot of heat in there So it just basically melted the plastic So that's it on that um, Next thing I want to cover so on the end of the uh, bar there is a bearing uh, race there and this you want to make sure has good movement um, if it doesn't, if it's pinched or whatever, that'll put drag on your saw and your chain will start hopping off. So on most bars, uh, main manufacturers especially, there is a grease hole on both sides. And you can grease these and it's recommended, I keep mine fairly greased. You can get these, this is just a greaser, very easy to use. So you just go one, two, three, four. Work it around. Oh, yeah. Other side. Okay. And you don't need to go crazy, crazy with it. Um, it's got good movement. Uh, if it was stiff at all, I would probably go ahead and blast it until at least it was coming out and then work it through. Um, I'm going to call that one good, though. So, 
that's one of the things that is uh, forgotten about in these is the mate in the maintenance cycle. There's a little bit of lubrication there. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing back together. Um, there's a few different ways we can do it. So this bar being brand new, I'm going to go ahead and put it right side up. You can rotate most bars. So I just back them all the way against the frame. Flip the chain. And it will find the drive in there. And you will know if it's not on the drive. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, so we're in good shape there. Uh, cutters are going the right direction. This actually has an indicator here, which is good for home use. We'll go ahead and throw the cover back on. You'll see it's not seating all the way. Do is we fine tune. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. Well, maybe not. Okay, so this is the challenge. You got to get this lined up. The way that you do that is by the adjustment screw. Um, sometimes they need to come in. Sometimes they need to go out. You got to get them lined up. So. We are in the hole there. Go ahead and put the nuts on. Finger tight. Don't need to be overly tight. We're just basically wanting to start to mesh the pieces back together. screwdriver again. There's that. Presser kicking back on. Okay. So so one thing I want to point out uh, is the chain tension. So see how I have that? There's a little bit of play and it like, snaps back in the track. That's about the right tension. Um, so what I typically do is do that. I'll go ahead and tighten, tighten down the bar. Okay, check it again. It's still really tight. Um, on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and back it back out just a little bit. Now I like to stretch my chains a little bit like that um, from the get-go. Yeah, right about there. If your chain's too tight, your machine won't run right. If it's too loose, you will throw the chain and get curved. So, there we go. And again, don't over tighten this. Just really, just one arm tight. <laughs> So, great, so chain's good, got that. Um, next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get some uh, oil and gas in it. So here is where the debates come in. And it's, uh, you ask one person versus another person, they'll all each have a different opinion. Let me go ahead and tell you what I know. So I come, my career has been, I've had done many things in my life, uh, most recently career-wise was, um, in part of the rental industry, equipment rental industry. And we used to rent out chainsaws. And one of the things that would happen is the saws would come back severely burnt on the bars. We were flying through bars, just, you know, two rentals per bar, just ridiculous. What we found out was that basically the saw was just wasn't being lubricated. So you can, bar oil, 
you can get bar oil um, and it works great especially if you're the one operator um, the biggest thing is just making sure that it's you know doing its job and lubricating and making a mess like oil does um, but for a rental industry we found that it was better to just use a light lighter uh, velocity um, consistency of oil and that just you know obviously made more of a mess but it did keep the machine lubricated to the point to where we weren't having to uh, you know replace bars um, chains were replaced after every rental so that wasn't a big deal but the chains were coming back in better shape as well so in my equipment I go ahead and run just 30 weight oil um, that works out good so like I said it could be controversial on that and while we're on controversial subjects fuel let's talk fuel so a lot of people and this is what I see with people who are like oh well I just can't keep my equipment running or, or don't know how to maintain it right a lot of them are handyman or yard work guys and you know they're barely making the money or you know don't know how to reinvest into their equipment or operations basically um, so they'll go and fill up a one gallon can of you know cheap unleaded fuel um, put some mixture in it call it good and then they wonder why um, a month later or so their saws rough to start or having trouble you know doesn't want to stay running um, or even after they store it good luck starting it and come to find out now they got to replace a carburetor because that low grade fuel especially here on the west coast um, tears up these small engines um, typically when a person asks me to rebuild a piece of equipment very first thing I do is get the model and go out and hit the internet and just buy a carburetor kit because they're like 15 bucks versus trying to find gaskets and stuff so um, one of the most important things with these you think okay well you know why would I buy premium fuel well there's a reason to buy premium fuel in my eight year experience with the rental industries these saws would go out maybe two months out of the year the rest of the time they sat on the shelf um, we ran premium fuel or we ran true fuel um, which is a premix fuel costly these run about six seven dollars a can but if you think about it how often are you using this thing it's not like it's an automobile where you're commuting with it every day so I think cost justifies it um, and this is what I run in all my stuff you know it's that whole factor of when a saw sits for nine months and you can go and start it with first pull sold um, and I've had really good luck with it so I believe it's yeah this one's 92 octane um, has all the additives and stuff in it so there's nothing about you know oh did I get the right mixture in is it gonna burn up my saw you know everything so that's my recommendation on it now my father um, still mixes his oil and has good luck but again he will use a higher grade fuel um, unleaded is just horrible for most things I believe even my automotive engines um, I think you can see it uh, for fuel economics and stuff too so this is what I'm gonna put in I'm gonna go ahead and put some 30 weight oil in the uh, bar oil uh, chamber and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up with this and I think at that point we may be ready to go ahead and start her up for the first time in God knows how long so let's go ahead and get that done all right so I have some oil in it have some fuel in it I believe we're about ready to go ahead and start it um, see if we can get it started uh, that's where we're at now one thing I did want to mention um, like I just showed you um, I went ahead and put 30 weight oil on this and yes here's the double-edged sword so obviously with that oil there's the potential that this thing if it's just left uh, not operating for you know a period of time that it could make a mess all over the place all right there's that side of it but if I'm gonna go ahead and use this I like that because at least then I know it's lubricated um, yes you can adjust that so typically inside this cover here is a where the oil comes out there'll be an adjustment for how much oil comes out now I don't like to mess with that because if let's say you run out of one type of oil and or say you grab bar oil um, the consistency of the oil could make it so it doesn't come out and then you're going to end up frying a bar so I leave it where it's at 
the one thing you can do if you're afraid of that is when you're not using it, go ahead and drain the oil. Um, get a suction cup or a suction uh, device. Take the oil out. You don't need to use do it that with fuel. If you're using premix fuel or um, you know fuel that you're mixing yourself, might be wise to do that. Go ahead and empty the fuel tank and then try to start it to get whatever fuel you can out of the carburetor. But for those uh, engineered fuels, I've never had an issue with leaving the fuel in there. Um, I've had a saw that, I mean, I'd go a couple years between using it and it still does just fine starting up. Uh, fuel hasn't tainted at all. So and I have checked that and I've done that on purpose just to see if that new fuel is exactly what they say it is. So let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground and try starting it up next. I think that's our next goal. All right, so for the sake of this, I'll show you a couple different ways to start a saw. Um, this is one way I like to do it and the way I tell people to do it. Um, obviously safety comes first. Got it on there. So I usually wedge it up against my knee like that and put down pressure. Okay, let's go ahead and choke it. Just like that, folks, every time. Caution. I'm going to move that up just a little bit. Other way to start a saw. Like this. Good little running saw. So there we have it. We have a one piece of equipment up and working. Hope this little video was helpful for you. If it was, um, please let me know. Leave a comment, like if you would. Um, tell your friends. Uh, looking to get a bunch of subscriptions. Uh, that way I can be able to do more of this type of videos. Um, yeah, so I think I'm done with this one. I'm glad to see it runs. I think this will definitely be a saw that I keep. Um, we'll wrap up with this one. And we'll see what brings us to the next video. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.